This do-it-yourself project is how I went about replacing my power center in my 2006 StarCraft pop-up. My process, steps, and how I completed the project. So hopefully all of this will be very valuable to you and you'll want to stay through the whole thing. <laughs> Facing the door inside our 2006 StarCraft pop-up, we'll find the power center. It's this black rectangular box and is often mounted near the floor in many RVs. Uh, now you'll hear people talking about a, a power distribution center or a power center or a power converter and even an inverter. So let's start with the power center. The power center uh, has a converter built into the system and you can identify generally because there's a fan or a heat sink or a PCB control board in it. Where an RV distribution system is commonly used for larger RVs and the power converter is actually a separate device. Where an inverter, which is a completely different tool, um, is used to convert DC to 120 volt AC. So they're doing um, basically the opposite job. So opening up my power center here, uh, there's several things to notice. One is that this is divided into a couple sections. On the left over here is the 120 volt circuit breakers. So that's the high voltage side. And then on this side over here is the low voltage 12 volt side where you find the 12 volt DC fuses of various ranges. Uh, this one's a 15 and a 20. So I'm assuming the 15 is running all the outlets and the 20 is running the AC. I'm not exactly sure how the main shore power is attached to this. Um, I think it's probably just attached directly to the bus bar, but that means that um, there is no master circuit breaker and that this camper is utilizing, relying on the breakers that it finds where it's plugged in. So at your breaker box or your home, whatever, wherever you're plugged in there. And the new power center will add a uh, primary circuit breaker, a 30 amp circuit breaker, as well as add an additional leg. On the DC side, I'll take advantage of the additional fuses on the DC to tie in my cell phone booster here on the left, which gives us a better cell service when we're boondocking. And then as well as that, we'll tie in another leg on the right, which is this button to the bottom right of the screen is fans uh, attached to my three-way fridge to help pull heat off of the heat sink. I'm replacing my uh, dead power center with a Power Dynamics 4100 power center. And here's the cover. And when open, what we'll have in this is the AC circuit breakers on the left, and then the DC fuses on the right side of this. With the cover off, uh, I've laid out the circuit breakers already for the 120. On the left is the shore power. That's the 30 amp. That's your inbound power. I've also added a tandem breaker, which is the two 15s and the 20 amp breaker for the AC. On the two 15s, one of them powers the internal power converter, converting 120 to 12 volt. The other runs the 120 volt outlets in the camper. I also want to point out that for this configuration, I've oversubscribed the main breaker with two 15 amp and a 20 amp, totaling 50 amps. The theory is that these appliances won't be running simultaneously um, at any given time, nor at maximum power. Okay, so let me show you how this thing works. The far left breaker slot is reserved for the main breaker, which is your inbound power, your shore power. It's over here on the top left. Once it's in place, it powers the other breakers with the AC bus bar. Now AC follows a standardized model that cabling does, and there's three wires in it. There's the black, the white, and the green. The white is the neutral, uh, black, it can get out of my way. The green is the ground. So the black ties to the circuit breaker, the white is the neutral, the green is the ground. You'll see the neutral tied to this neutral bus bar the black wire ties into your circuit breakers, uh, usually at the bottom like on a screw like this. And then there's a grounding bus bar here at the bottom that generally ties to your chassis. This is the 12 volt fuse bank. So this 40 amp fuse, uh, this is your primary fuse that ties with this red wire to your positive side of your battery bank. This white wire ties to the negative side or the neutral. And this is what ties the system into your battery storage. This other red wire is rated up to 30 amps. You can put a 30 amp fuse here. 
and this is probably designed for higher amp draw devices or appliances. For the remaining five DC legs, these are all black wires, and these black wires are going to lead to your appliances that are inside your camper. They have a max fuse rating of 20 amps per leg. Now, you, this can be for an individual appliance or you can tie multiples together. As long as when you tie them together, the total does not exceed 20 amps. Most of the work on this camper is going to be done underneath this bench seat that I've removed. And here we see a top-down view of the power center. I'm going to start on the DC side, so I'm going to leave the AC side alone until we work through the DC. What I discovered when I started digging into this was that instead of the fuses being a one uh, fuse to one wire out, many of the wires are actually tied together. So you might have something like the lights tied to the CO2 sensor. So now that I've discovered that, what I need to do with each of these is actually trace each of the outbound wires to find where they actually lead. This is going to get messy, so take some photos to help you remember and label the wires as you go. Okay, I cut my first power lead out, which is this blue DC power lead. And what I discovered was this power lead out is tied in. The one power lead is powering three devices. So now what I need to do is cut these and trace each one of them. So my process here is to just to run through each of these wires and add power to them and see what happens. So you can see here, we get the pump. And then the lights. So I can test this a couple of times just to verify, and that's both of the overhead light sets there. But on this third wire, nothing happens. We get a mystery. So we're gonna have to trace that one down. So what I did to trace uh, these wires is I grabbed the butt connector and just slid it over this uh, power lead here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is connect it to whatever wire I'm going to try to trace so that it will hold it in place while I'm away looking for what has power in the camper. Okay, so we've already traced the radio and I wanted to show you a couple more components and tracing the wires down. This is a 12 volt powered uh, thermostat for the propane heater and we're looking for the green and white or the black and white wire and so here we find the black and white wire. So we know that those power leads that we're looking for, this can be traced, the black and white one can be traced to um, this thermostat here. Okay, here we are at the outdoor access panel to the back of the refrigerator, and this is where we can change it between 120 and 12 volt or switch it to propane. And so I'm looking for the uh, power cable, and there it is right there for the DC. I've labeled it uh, before. There's our green and white uh, wire that we're looking for that runs over to the converter. So now we're sure. Um, of our instincts that the green and the black where they run and which ones they are so we can label them uh, for better troubleshooting and fuse identification in the future. All right well I successfully traced um, each of the cables that were or the wires that were tied to uh, the initial blue wire uh, and something I think I'd point out here is that you see this bundle this is the negative side of the positive and negative of the uh, DC circuit uh, and behind here is a bus bar uh, that is tied in uh, like the new unit that's going in tied into the chassis ground for both AC and DC um, and what I'll show you as we move through is that all of the negative side of the DC so you'll see that here's the positive it connects to the power and then this is all tied together this negative side uh, that is all going to be uh, tied to the grounding to the chassis via a ground wire. And then we'll take one connection and run it to the shunt that provides the link to the negative side of the battery uh, to do all the battery um, state monitoring. So voltage, amp draw, that type of thing for all the components using the battery.
On a different note, I wanted to talk about uh, practicing some safety discipline. So this is my power for 12 volt, the first one I was working on to trace. And probably earlier you saw that I was uh, letting it hang open, which is um, not safe. So I wanna show you why. Uh, even with the shore power disconnected, uh, this cable, this wire, has 13.57 volts coming out of it, uh, which is normal, so that's good. But leaving it hanging like that could brush up against something like this and make contact a circuit and blow your fuse. We want to make practice good discipline. I use a butt connector to cover it. You can just use a piece of tape. Uh, but that's the safest way to keep it from connecting, blowing a fuse, or damaging any of your parts while you're working on these things. So be mindful of that. But I wanted to show you the back side of the um, power converter, this power center here, and point out this uh, bus bar right here. So I, on the new one, we want to add um, a bus bar uh, to replicate what's going on here, which is connecting the ground here for the whole system, uh, AC and DC, uh, and then all the neutrals of DC here as well. Uh, so in the new system, we will add a bus bar because the new power center doesn't uh, come with a bus bar, and we'll move away from wire nuts uh, in an attempt to clean the wiring up using uh, bus bars and terminals. For a quick power view, here's my inbound 120 volt shore power. Uh, the air conditioning cable here that is the outbound to powers the air conditioner. Uh, and then finally, uh, the power that runs out to all the outlets in the camper. Something else I wanted to point out real quick is you notice that there's two colors of a Romex in here. There's this yellow Romex. Uh, this is uh, rated at 20 amps. It's a 12 gauge wire. And this white Romex is rated at 15 amps. Uh, it's a 14 gauge wire. So that also helped me identify which was running uh, to the AC air conditioner and what was running to the outlets, as well as it'll help me map out what circuit breakers to use. I've opened up the access panel to the AC distribution side. So this is actually the uh, shore power coming in. It is wire nutted uh, and then this line goes to the front and ties in to the breaker bar. Uh, you see the neutral here that comes over to the neutral bar and the ground that comes over to the ground bar here. We are going to follow this setup on the new power center um, tracking it just like it is here. So uh, what we want to do is just get a good picture of this and then start disassembling it
all the wires in the back are now disconnected and so the final step is just to uh, remove it from where it is mounted in the panel. So there it is, that's it. Okay, so just wanted to follow up. This is pretty flimsy paneling. So in the past, they had structured it uh, using uh, some support framing. And I'll come back and with a staple gun and connect uh, the paneling to some structure like this on the back. Uh, I gotta go borrow my father-in-law's staple gun. Be right back. They're all shooting all the way through. I hate these things. <laughs> well, uh, here is, you know, I like to talk about the uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Well, here's the master of none part. Um, I have a new staple gun. I didn't borrow my father-in-law's. And so uh, intelligently I went ahead and tested it right where I was working. And I uh, shot the nails all the way through the ply board because I had the wrong pressure setting and the wrong depth setting. And of course, I didn't do it once. I did it one, two, three, four, five, six times. <laughs> uh, okay, well, after I install this box, I probably now am going to have to find some trim pieces to cover that up. All right. Another adjustment. Let's see what we get. Finally. Well, here we go. It's attached. It's super ugly. Uh, I've got this staple gun finally set to the setting I want, and so I can continue marring my camper. Stay tuned, but don't tell anybody I make those kinds of mistakes. I don't want anybody to. These are iron-on, and because they're iron-on, I have to wait until after they're attached uh, to add any stain to them, or actually the polyurethane, which will uh, give it the same or similar yellowish color here that we have, that golden hue. All right, so I'm going to tie these on real quick so that I can get the iron working, and uh, we will see how, how that works.
not exactly sure what's going on here, but even though I'm checking the measurement, after I start ironing, it looks like it is longer, so <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, I didn't do well in math in school. Uh, maybe not measurements either, clearly. All right, give me a minute. This is gonna be ugly. I need private time. Well, I think a finished carpenter would probably be ashamed of this work. Uh, but I feel like uh, I didn't do too bad of a job. I'm sure it could use uh, a little more love and attention. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, you know, give it a little bit of a sanding to get it cleaned up, wipe it down, and then go ahead and put the polyurethane on it. I think that for my, for my purposes, uh, this is doing a pretty good job of cleaning up the uh, blemishes I had caused. Okay, I think the color worked out really nicely. I have a little bit of a drip here, so I want to clean that up. I could probably actually do a little touch up here too. Uh, that did nothing. Okay. Next step for me in mounting the panel and connecting the AC, uh, the alternating current, is to uh, remove the knockouts here so that the wires can come through and connect to the breakers. I found that uh, to remove these knockouts, which were a little bit more difficult than I expected, I, if I flip the box over, so I haven't mounted it yet clearly, uh, and score each of these uh, tabs connecting the knockout with the razor knife, with a razor knife, then I can more easily come through and knock it out with a different tool. To provide support um, in connecting the wires into the, the back of the box and to hold them securely, I'm going to use these cable glands that I have from another project. These are actually used um, for the same purpose but for an exterior box. Uh, these create a waterproof seal. Uh, this isn't actually necessary but instead of the old model that we were using uh, that were clip-ins, these to me are easier because I can screw the nut uh, on. Uh, inside the panel to create a secure connection and these are easy enough to install by slipping them over uh, the wires here uh, which I say they're easier but maybe this isn't going to be so easy on camera of course uh, and then they just slide over your wires like this and then to secure them you tighten this nut here so that'll give me some security that these if they get bumped and knocked around on the back will be firmly so on this pop-up this is our shore power line here uh, the idea on this is that this gives us uh, our own basically extension cable this is a 30 amp so you can hear I just shut off the power inside, but this is what we mean by shore power, is your connection from the camper to your power source, your 120. Because this is a 30 amp, not a 50 amp, we are able to connect this directly to a 120. Uh, however, this is a special extension cord. Uh, this is rated for higher amperage, so this is rated for 30 amp uh, flow, so 30 amp draw. This. <laughs> This is rated for higher amperage that can handle this 30 amp load. Okay, so next step here is to wire the AC into the neutral bar and the ground bar and to go ahead and install the AC breakers. So I have a 30 amp as my main. Uh, I have a double 15. One of these is going to run the power converter that's inside this box. The other is going to power the outlets, the AC outlets over here. Uh, and then my last one is for the air conditioning unit. So I'm going to start installing those now.
I finally got all of my AC tied in uh, and you'll see that I pulled the chassis ground and placed it in this very first uh, screw terminal. I did that because it's a solid core cable. Uh, it's very hard to manage and I just moved this green cable uh, that comes over here from the power converter over to this last one to get it out of our way. Uh, and now I've got everything wired. So all the black wires are going to each of these. I've got the AC to the 20 amp, the power uh, converter aspect of this tied into a 15 amp. The uh, outlets here are tied into this 15 amp here as well. So it's sharing a dual. And then the main breaker here at 30. So I finished up on the AC side and next is to tie in the DC side neutral to the bus bar. Uh, we'll tie it in here on the front at the bottom and we're going to add a new bus bar uh, to the system uh, to clean up that uh, wire nutted wire mess in the back. Instead of using wire nuts on the DC side, I wanted to get a cleaner connection so I want to use this bus bar. And this bus bar is actually usually designed for a one-to-one -one connection on either side of the screw. So you, you tie a positive here and a positive comes out over this side um, and you can mix it up. But what I want to do with this one is have a single neutral come in or a negative come in here, make all of these negative and then distribute out to this side to all of the uh, negative side of the um, appliances, DC appliances that are coming out to the camper. And so to do that, I'm going to use one of these bridges, which ties all the terminals on one side together. And then on the other side, I'll have all the leads, all negatives or the neutrals that lead to the appliances. When using these bus bars, I like to uh, try to show you blurry video as much as possible. Uh, I like to modify the spade bits uh, because it gives a lot of surface area in the connection so that we have uh, you know a, a better connectivity with each of these and basically what I do is just simply grab a bit that is the right size for the screw terminal we're using I grab these things and I widen the hole So now, now I can use this on the screw terminal and it won't pull out. So this is how I like to solve this problem. Well, because I'm generally a friendly guy and didn't want to bore you guys to tears, I went ahead and uh, installed the um, bus bar there and tied in the ground from the ground bar on the front of the unit. So you saw me um, tie that in earlier, and so now we've got it tied into this bus bar. Next step is to uh, get all these labeled neutrals and tie them into the bus bar. So I'll be working on that now. When terminating DC wires, I like to make sure I start with a clean cut. And so uh, I'm going to trim this piece off here, all the way underneath. I'm going to strip it back where it can get a good connection in the terminal. I'm going to use heat shrink in two places there, which is shrink tubing that fits the diameter of the wire closely. And then a second place, which is on the spade terminal itself, which is a little larger in diameter. And then use a heat gun, a hair dryer, you know, or even a lighter to shrink the heat tubing onto this to create a good seal for it just as an extra layer of of protection now this is going to be hot so i want to wait a minute to touch it and i'm going to run this up over here 
and put it in this first spot. So I'm finished up tying the uh, DC negative uh, into the bus bar over there. Now I'm working on the DC positive here. I'm going to start here and show you guys. Here's the battery lead, right? So I'm going to do this last so we don't have power to the system at all uh, until I'm finished. Uh, the second thing is I've tied in uh, this higher. The second one goes up to 30 amps uh, on this new system. Uh, and I'm tied this one into my AT&T cell booster. Uh, a 12 volt battery and also my fridge fan uh, so that's been done and I'm going to dedicate one of these lines to the radio and I'll just show you how I'm doing some of these things and mapping them out it's too long so I'm going to trim that so it gets a better connection and hold that in there tight and I prefer to use butt connectors I feel like it's a cleaner solution over wire nuts because the wires uh, are able to lay in parallel next to each other versus all coming together in kind of a pyramid bird's nest. I'm also using um, shrink tubing here to help protect against moisture since there's some water lines near these wires. Okay, so we have the radio tied into the second one now. So let's move to the third line. So I now have all of the positive side and the neutral or negative side of the DC tied in. And now I'm gonna tie in this neutral to the shunt. So the shunt splits what's coming in from one side and then there's a battery lead to the other. And this is how you monitor battery state health uh, with the battery monitor tool. A shunt's necessary for that. So my very final step for the DC side is to tie in the main positive to the positive post on the battery. So I've got the panel installed. I just finished wiring all the DC and now I'm just running through some basic tests. So you could probably hear that I have the AC working, the air conditioner is running. So that means my 20 amp breaker is supplying power. I've tested over here with a uh, outlet tester Everything's wired correctly, lights are on, which means that this breaker here is working, uh, which is what's tied to this. And then there's a test point on the converter, and over here I've got 13.58 volts across the line. I've also plugged in, I'm not sure if we can see it, if this is going to work. I've also added this new piece down here, it's testing this, so I've got voltage there as well. My radio is has power here, my AT&T booster, the fans on the fridge are working. And that is everything. So everything is now hooked up. The final stages is to put the face plate, the bevel back on um, and label everything. So here are some final shots of the converter installed and ready to go. Okay, that does it for me, everybody. Uh, power center install, everything looks good. Looks like everything tested out okay. So. Um, again, it's my first time doing it. I'm pretty sure I got it right. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs>